It's August 1920, and down there in the crowded streets of Constantinople, a riot, an unrest. The Treaty of Sèvres is signed. A central power in World War I, Turkey has been reduced to a petty state. Mohammed VI, titular head of the fallen Ottoman Empire, is first to feel the power of a proud people. Turkish patriots reject the treaty. A nationalist government is in, and the Sultan of Turkey is out. Their land partitioned, parading Turks demand a better peace. The future Governor General Bey warns against violence, while all Constantinople hails a government that is of, by, and for the Turks. Nationalist leader is Kamal Pasha. Her face unveiled, the Pasha's wife signals the modernization of an ancient land. Foot soldiers and cavalry join the growing nationalist movement, and Turkey prepares to defend or regain territory lost by the Treaty of Sev. Mounted Turkish troops train for mountain warfare, and Kemal Pasha, now Ataturk, watches mountain maneuvers. Turkish troops dig in to await Greeks invading land awarded them by treaty. Fighting is furious, casualties high, but Turkish troops repulse invading Greeks in action that threatens new war of worldwide proportions. Orthodox Greeks protest Turk violation of the peace. Through Constantinople streets, prelates of the Greek Orthodox Church deride Turk tactics. But Turkey claims that she was made to sign the treaty by force, and by force she will right that wrong. Allied warships stand in the harbor of Constantinople in the interest of Allied governments and capital. In the city streets, British troops bring order to chaos. A citizenry that is up in arms calms down. But British and Americans convoy Greeks through streets that are hostile. U.S. sailors escort Greek refugees to the safety of neutral ships, while behind them, enemy Turks battle on to win back some of the land it lost in war. Greece gives up. In Lausanne, July 1923, a new treaty makes concessions to Turkey, the new republic. Freedom comes to Turkish women, too. Here's leader Halid Hanum and her husband. No veils for women of the Turkish Republic. The Turkish Joan of Arc and her husband enjoy equality now. Turkey's first woman army officer is bemedaled Fatima Hanum. Soon women won the right to vote. The dead empire became a living republic, and war in Turkey was another victory for the people and for peace.